Hallo zusammen. Today we definitely need to find out more about Rammstein's song Schwarz, what the German lyrics are all about, what makes them interesting linguistically speaking, for instance for language learners out there, maybe, who knows. And we're also gonna find out what they translate to in English. Schwarz is the third song, very German way to show the number three, by the way, on Rammstein's eighth album, Zeit, which I've already talked about numerous times, actually. I've made a couple of videos about those songs, and I even reacted to the album for the first time with you guys on this channel as a first listening experience. So if you want to check that out, feel free to do that in the end card. It begins with the first verse, and we're going to take a look at the first half of it for now. Geh ich vor der Nacht zur Ruhe decke ich mich mit Schwermut zu. Die helle Welt will mir nicht glücken, muss mich mit Finsternis verzücken. The song seems to be about someone who is drawn towards the darkness and the night instead of dwelling in the light of day. And that whole scenario basically already gets laid out in the first verse. And once again in a very poetic way, because as we all know, that is the way to Lindemann often writes his lyrics, you know, very poetic and somewhat special, you know, diverging from daily standard high German, that is. A good example is line one, Geh ich vor der Nacht zur Ruhe, which means go I before the night or nightfall to rest, literally. So it basically implies a sort of conditional context and or temporal context. If I go to sleep before nightfall, which would be conditional or temporal, when or whenever I go to sleep before night actually begins. Both may work in their own way, I guess. A fundamental term referring to all the lyrics in this song is die Schwermut, the gloom. I guess when you feel schwermütig, you basically experience yeah, something like an invisible force that drags you down and that stops your ambitions, emotions and motivations, you know, that makes you feel unencouraged, if that is actually a term. However, in this context, the lyrical eye basically seems to embrace the gloom, the darkness, using it as a bedsheet of sorts, you know, metaphorically speaking, figuratively speaking, to basically be able to, as I've said before, dwell in the darkness when there is light around you, when you're surrounded by light. Because even though this verse mentions the night and the whole going to bed scenery, it works within the parameters of actually meaning a daytime experience and the lyrical eye feeling down, depressed or gloomy. Line 3 almost makes me think of the lyrical eye as God who tries to create a nice and beautiful daytime, but they couldn't succeed. That's mainly because of the phrase, will mir nicht glücken. It just doesn't want to work out the way I want it to be. In turn, that also means that the lyrical eye doesn't really want to be so dark and live a bright daily life, I guess, but they are just incapable of doing so, to some degree at least. Line 4 reinforces that inability and the lyrical eye seemingly and eventually accepts the darkness it has to live with and in, and as part of it, basically. Speaking of parts, the second part of the first verse goes like this. Es ist die totenschwangere Nacht, die uns verzückt zu Sündern macht. Gebote, die wir übergehen, kann im Dunkeln niemand sehen. The lyrical eye basically seems to be blaming the night for their misconduct and misbehavior. And by this point, it seems to me like as if they were trying to reason their dark, deceptive and maybe even criminal thoughts. See line 3 for willfully neglected commandments, for instance. This section basically embodies and contains one of the reasons why I love Till Lindemann's lyricism so much as a German. He always comes up with linguistic ideas, be it outdated words that he uses, very poetic phrasings, choices of words and the like, or in this case, making up new words, which can still be understood because of the context and of the parts of the word, because this is, very German actually, a compound word, totenschwanger. When I read or hear a word like that, it directly evokes a certain imagery in me. You know, I keep thinking about certain things that I associate with that term, for instance, and how it correlates with the overall thematics, the themes and tropes of this song. Literally, it means death pregnant or deathly pregnant, which basically is used sort of as an increasing modal particle or adverb, expressing the drastic quality of the darkness of the night. You know, it's so very dark that it's, it's, it's almost deathly dark. 
Apart from taking the night, literally, meaning the time of day, it could also work as the dark and evil side of the human psyche. It's that temptatious part of being human that deceives us and basically grants us free reign and allows us to do bad things. What's interesting is that in case it's still the lyrical I speaking here, they know about all of these things and seem to be quite reflective, yet they don't shy away from the darkness and dark things. Maybe because, you know, they can't really control themselves anymore. They have given in to the darkness. The last two connected lines highlight that aspect. No one can see your wrongdoings when there is no light being shed on you or those deeds. Wo kein Kläger, da kein Richter. Where there is no plaintiff, there is no judge. A German saying, basically. It could also imply that those wrongdoings happen in secret and deceitful or simply and literally at night when people are asleep. So that is why no one notices that. The pre-chorus underlines that notion to some degree, while also quite paradox, I guess. Die Nacht ist wunderschön. Ich will nicht schlafen gehen. This is somewhat boggling my mind, to be honest. Because on the one hand, if you embrace the darkness, which I totally get because it's a cool band. Anyway, if you enjoy that, but you don't want to go to bed, two things which are basically closely interlinked, traveling to the land of dreams and, you know, pausing your consciousness for a certain amount of time. Why don't you like that part? I don't know, maybe it has something to do with giving up Control? Self-control? Getting some GTA Vice City vibes here with Laura Branigan and self-control. It's a great song. <sighs> well, what do you think about this? The chorus paints that picture even further, but also seems to offer other potential reasons as to why the lyrical eye and their companions behave that way. Denn immer wenn ich einsam bin, zieht es mich zum Dunkel hin, der Sonnentod ist mir Vergnügen. Immer wenn es dunkel wird, die Seele sich in Lust verirrt. Die kalte Nacht ist mir Vergnügen, trink das Schwarz in tiefen Zügen. Trink. In the third line, the phrasing ist mir Vergnügen is another example of a very poetic and unusual phrasing. Funny enough, it's closer to the English phrasing it is my pleasure. Literally speaking, it means is me a pleasure. And of course, the sun's death is not the actual death of the sun, it's the sunset, dusk. Using the poetic or old-fashioned phrasing not only makes the lyrics stand out in general, but it also allows for the rhyming couple, Vergnügen, Zügen, in lines 6 and 7. What I just mentioned in terms of another potential reason why the lyrical eye acts the way they do is expressed in lines 7 and 8. Trink das Schwarz in tiefen Zügen. Drink the black in deep draughts. And please don't confuse the term Zügen here with the noun der Zug, singular, die Züge, plural, the train, because in this context it means drinking something deeply or intensively, in deep draughts. I'm wondering if trink, you know, the last word, basically line eight, is meant like self-reflective, the lyrical I saying that to themselves, you know, I have to drink it like that. Or if it's addressing someone else and directed at someone else. Trink! You know, very imperative, very co uh, demanding, commanding even. Ordering someone to do that, to drink, to join in, you know, into the darkness in order to be able to experience the darkness together. Could work both ways, I guess. Let's continue with the second verse. Hat sich der Tag im Mond verkrochen, steigt uns ein Fieber in die Knochen. Und kein Gebet und keine Kerzen heucheln Licht in unsere Herzen. This verse continues the outlined explanation of the living in darkness in broad daylight thing. And now that I think about it, maybe it's also related to vampires who want to be able to roam around in the day without fearing the sun. Hmm. Or maybe it's the orcs in Lore of the Rings who at first couldn't cope with the sunlight and only operate in the night. Hmm. Or maybe I'm getting insanely off the tracks here. Uh, hmm. Uh, anyway, the German term das Fieber, mostly singular, sounds relatively similar to the English fever, which may make it easy for you to memorize it. A fixed vowel combination like ee in this case is called a diphthong. It's a fixed combination of two distinctive vowels that can be found in different terms, not just nouns, but also you know, adjectives, verbs, you name it. What's interesting about this one in specific is the E functions as a prolonging vowel. You don't pronounce it. So in this case, it's a long E indicated by the E after it. 
but you don't pronounce the E. That's definitely interesting. I like the intriguing choice of using the verb heucheln to pretend in this context. Usually you'd expect a term like to shine, scheinen, to shine light, Licht scheinen. But heucheln may imply that neither prayers as an abstract light or hope, nor candles as a physical, actual source of light may break the darkness, dark thoughts and intentions. So heucheln, to pretend, may mean that even though these things technically have the power to do that, it just doesn't work because the darkness and gloomy thoughts are too powerful and they are too much a part of yourself by that point, your personality. The second half of this verse goes, Das Tageslicht ist kein Verlust. Die Nacht hält vielen ihre Brust. Trinker, Huren und Verschwörer sind den Schatten zugehörig. I feel like now the lyrical eye basically tries to reason why they love the darkness so much. Basically in the vein of, you know, if others are allowed to enjoy those dark thoughts and evil things that they want to do, you know, be it even crime, you know, up to that extent, why shouldn't I be allowed to? Like, why? Why? Once again, the second line suggests that it's not necessarily the people themselves that actively sought the darkness, but the way, shape or form of the darkness itself that creates a certain interest in people. The night is compared to a mother breastfeeding their children, which not only alludes back to the drinking part in the chorus, but also to this inner connection, darkness almost becoming a part of you. The last two lines once again underline that aspect by mentioning that one belongs to der Schatten, singular, die Schatten, plural, the shadow. As longtime viewers know, I'm honest with you guys, comparing this song to other tracks on the album, it's a solid song, but it's not an outstanding song to me. That being said though, once again great lyricism of course, and I wonder what do you make of this song? What did you think about the song before you learned about the lyrics meaning? Maybe just from listening to the music and the melodies and the, the atmosphere, you know? Feel free to tell me in the comments. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe, to like it and to share it with others. Also make sure to check out the video description down below with more interesting links to my socials and other support options such as Patreon, for instance. Patreon.com slash definitely. Much appreciated as well. Thanks for watching everyone. Hope you enjoyed this video and definitely see you next time. Tschüss und bis zum nächsten Mal.